much for joining today. And thank you for the question you have sent. Some of them are great, and I hope I will be able to cover all of them, uh, or at least some, with the time that we have. Um, perhaps I'll start from a few general questions that have been sent, and then we can focus on more specific questions about PARC and 7734, which I believe those are the two productions that the schools that are participating today have chosen. Um, so starting from answering a few general questions that you sent, um, a little bit more about the backgrounds and my creative process and my influences. So over the years, my work has mainly focused on subject of that embrace social concerns and our shared humanity. My interest in those areas grew from observing our contemporary life and reflecting on our history, on our culture, and on the way that we live today. So I grew up in a kibbutz in Israel. And the ethos of my kibbutz was based on shared values of equality and respect to differences in our community. My father was the theater director and producer of a very left-wing political art venue in Tel Aviv, which produced and presented collaborative work between Israeli and Palestinian actors and directors. So as a very young teenager, I was exposed to artistic expression that was politically engaged and um, I believe challenged my thinking and evoked deeper awareness uh, to those issues. I guess this was one of my first influences into a creative being. Um, I believe that art has the power and the capacity to communicate, sometimes indirectly, to our subconscious, but in a way, those visual images stimulate and trigger different levels of understanding. So through my work, I have always been interested in discussing those issues that concern me as an artist and as human being living today. For example, injustice, inequality, the concept of freedom, or the varied perspective and layers underneath all of those subjects. So, in my view, art is firstly a form of expression, a form of communication. It can shine a new light on subject matter, raise awareness, provoke thoughts, stimulate emotions, and present reality from unconventional perspective. So through my work, I'm interested in mainly raising questions, increasing awareness, um, evoking thoughts, rather than providing answers. The creation of any new work always feels for me like a um, philosophical discussion, exploring alternate viewpoints, contradiction, metaphors, rather than reaching a final conclusion or answer. So, as I said before, over the years, my work mainly focused on subject of social concern, or our shared humanity, through observing our contemporary society and reflection on history and culture. And different work had different focus. But some issues of injustice, inequality, point of view, have come back in various projects throughout the years. So I'll give some examples from previous creation and then talk a little bit more specifically about the work that you are learning. So Justicia, for example, that been crea created in 2006, seven, looked at our justice system and it's explored the physical and conceptual point of view. It asked the question if, what, if our point of view dictates what we see or if what we see dictates our point of view. So basically, do we come to a situation with a preconception and then we see the situation through that lens of what we heard before or what we, things we know, or do we really see the situation and then build on that our point of view? So the, Justice also explored the notion of guilt as well 
and um, as an individual and as communities. So in the notion of guilt and the notion of justice. So that's in very, very short. Uh, 7734, for example, explore similar questions again of how, of point of view. So it looks, for example, of how terrorists from one side could be seen as a freedom fighter from the other. How perspective can change our understanding of what we see. But more than that, it was also ex exploration of the capacity of the human nature to produce brutality against each other. So, and this is how it's been presented throughout history in genocides and crimes against humanity around the world, and still now in different cases, but mainly focused, in my case, mainly focused on, or based on concentration camp in the second World War and derived from my personal family history as a third generation of a Holocaust survivor. So in the 80s, while I was a little bit older than you in my, um, in my teens age, I visited concentration camps in Holland and looked for my grandfather home. I was a teenager at, at that time and it was a very, very strong experience that I carry with me for, for many, many years after that. Um, and it, looks, it took a lot of time to um, develop it as artwork and um, to analyze that experience and that process. And I think somehow it's one of the work that brought me to a, a very deeper understanding uh, personally and about how I view the world today. Um, the work also, 7734, also looked at the concept of inheritance of memory or inheritance of pain um, or of trauma which exists um, in a lot of study about Holocaust second, third generation but also in other study. Um, just summary some of the other works of so PARC as some of you are learning was created in 2005 and later remounted in 2014 and it looked at a park as a microcosmos to, for our society, a sort of reflection of our society at that time, I mean, 2005 and later on. So it dealt with the ownership of a public land, the sense of belonging and immigration. It focused on eight characters that occupied a public park. Each one sees the park as if it's belonged to him as part of their home. So the relevancy of this piece is, it was even greater when we performed it in 2014 with the start of the talk on Brexit and how um, many who immigrate here to Britain might feel and felt when so park. So potentially about them, potentially about um, that kind of notion of belonging in a public land who, who it belongs to. But it was greater than that. It also looked at freedom of movement. It looked at freedom of speech and freedom of expression and the power to manipulate those freedoms. Um, freedom as a piece on itself looked at all that kind of bigger con concept of what it means uh, to be free. But um, that's kind of a summary, a summary of some of those questions that repeated from you a bit more general. Um, now I have more specific questions from you. <laughs> um, and I'm, I wonder if perhaps I would start with a question from each school, one question from each school. And then I'll open it up for you to ask me live questions because some of you sent really nice and very um, insightful questions. And I thought it would be nice to share some of them now. There are quite a lot, so I don't know if I will be able to cover all of them, but we'll just start with a few. So I have a question from Beth from, is it Maskell's Academy? I don't know how you pronounce it, but Beth, 
ask about the dancers uh, and she said the dancers are clearly multi-talented especially in their acting and dancing ability what was the audition process like for park so auditions in auditions i'm um, I'm looking for dancers that are versatile, well-rounded, able to express in various ways using their entire capacity. So for Park, I saw over 700 people and it was very hard to get um, to find dancers that have this versatility that I was looking for. Many dancers finished training and they know how to learn a dance routine, but I found that not many allow themselves, give themselves permission to express, to be an artist, to be a performer um, in their own individual way. They might be able to copy other people's uh, quality or other people's language, but not to perform so much, not to be as original and invest in themselves to find um, different voices. So, I then decided, in fact, after that audition of Park, that um, to develop JV2. So JV2 was developed right after that, and the idea of that was really to train dancers to work um, as a versatile performance and to develop dancers that interested to be more well-rounded and able to deliver text to act, or we call it more behave. Um, as well as dance. So that was um, kind of one of the initiatives that came up after auditions that I realized that it's easier to train. In those days, most of the dancers that joined the company joined from JB2. So uh, I find it a lot of the time we hold open audition because I'm interested to see what dancers are out there and sometimes I get surprised and impressed and excited and take dancers from those open auditions. But most of the time uh, in the company, half of the dancers are now have graduated from JV2. So I'm just going to go to the next question. Unless, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm speaking, so if you have any answers, actually we will unmute you in a moment, or you can unmute yourself individually and ask a question as well. But I might just un answer a few questions from one from each school. So I'll go to Richmond School and Sixth Form. So I have a question from Charlotte to ask, what was the inspiration behind Park and how did you decide on the set design and costume? So I spoke a little bit about the inspiration behind Park already, and I can speak a little bit more about it later, but um, the set was developed mainly with the idea of an urban park that would attract those kind of character that inhabit this, this place. Um, so it had an old historic statue that would potentially attract the odd tourists that will come and look for it. It was, we wanted it to be a rundown, um, look under construction to attract a um, place that might attract a homeless who also used the fountain as a shower and it has the fences around that could be for security measures, but also to show that there is some risk, but there is some protection, and perhaps it is on the verge of development. So kind of to initiate those, those kind of idea behind, because the space is potentially to be developed. Um, the statue of the mermaid was designed with the idea of bringing this character to life as a real life myth. And then there are other props and elements that we use uh, throughout the piece because my work have a lot of, we work with props as dance partners. So there are a lot of props like the bin or the um, a homeless sleeping bag and things like that, that we use as part of the choreography that were kind of inhabiting the, kind of being part of the, of the scenery, of the development of the set. So I'm going to go for, I hope those questions, uh, those answer some of the questions and I'm happy to elaborate a bit further on later. So then I have a question from Oldfield School. Um, I think it was, it came from a teacher uh, that asked about the choreographic process. Um, 
So my method of devising uh, mainly encourages performer to use the range of, of uh, capacities to achieve a versatility in performance. And when I'm talking about capacities, I'm talking about, um, about their not just physical capacities, but also vocal, emotional, and intellectual. So throughout the process, we talk about subject matter and we investigate it from different way and how we can, how we can tell that story could be using the voice, could be using images, could be using um, many other things beside the movement. So we're just exploring um, each idea, each process throughout. So for example, we had a uh, bullying in park. We looked at what it means to bully. How do you bully? What is to be bullied? What kind of, how, what do you use physically? What would you use uh, vocally? What, with what um, props you can bully? Um, so we kind of investigate all that um, process as we develop the idea. Uh, I use quite simple devising process to empower the performance to use those physical, vocal, emotional, intellectual ability to be layered within each scene uh, they perform. I hope it's answer more or less. <laughs> um, I'm going to Hall Cross Academy. And again, there is a question from a teacher asking, Becky, asking, um, Okay, so it's a long question. Uh, asking about um, how my style evolved over the past 20 years, since 2000, in terms of movement, subject matter, design, and the way I make dance. So I guess observing of our contemporary society and reflecting on subject matter that concern me and concern others, always been the essence and the drive of my work. So in 2002, three, I created Lullaby that looked at how we as a society deal with illness and hospitalization, which is subject that unfortunately will always be relevant. And as we all know now with COVID-19, relevant for us even more at that moment, uh, but always relevant and uh, engaged me very much in 2000. And um, as, as, all, all, all throughout this year. So through all the works, as I said at the beginning there, you know, talking about Park and 7734 and Justicia, um, all of those kind of thread and subject matter run through all of them, till Medusa, which dealt with gender inequality and with subject of the environment. Um, other things that been repeated, I guess, throughout my work was uh, the interest with locations. And the story that each one of them hosts um, and um, you know the space the spaces is something that fascinates me very much in terms of what it hosts in it. So would be a hospital, for example, in Lalaba, it will be the courtroom in Justicia, it will be the park in Park. What are those spaces have in them that create the atmosphere? And I very much enjoy creating kinetic sets, sets that moves and uh, become partner, a dance partner and dance themselves or have some relationship with, the dancer have relationship with. Um, in terms of movement, I probably less and less was interested over the year in dictating movement or build the movement and ask dancer to perform or to dance exactly my movement, which I perhaps started with, and more interested in initiating and being a catalyst for a joint investigation, which brought movement from collaborative process with the performers. Um, I guess it um, probably would answer that in, in short. And I'm going to question from William Howard School about 7734 from Kerry. Um, ah, so this is about uh, what inspired me to make 7734, which I spoke a little bit about and what do the number mean? 
So 7734, if you type it on a calculator and you turn it upside down, read hell. And as I spoke before, one of very important um, things for me is point of view. And I was mentioning that I was interested about how things change when we look at them from a different point of view. So like this number, um, as I said before, we have this idea of looking at um, terrorists and then from the other side, it could look like a freedom fighter. So I grew up with the, um, the partisans, which were freedom fighter, Jews, freedom fighter, who tried to um, bomb the train, who took Jews into Auschwitz and different concentration camps. So some of those uh, partisan were members of my kibbutz. From the other side, they might have looked like terrorists. So it's, again, it's how do we see things from, depends where you are. I was very much interested in that question. The other reason for the number rather than name is that a lot of Jewish people became number. They lost their identity and they have the number tattoos on, on their arm. So that's losing name, the fact of losing the name and having a number. I wanted to bring that into the, into the title of the book. Um, just one more question from school, uh, Sunday secondary school. Uh, Maddie have a lot of great questions. I'm gonna pick one. So one of them was, what is the meaning behind the use of breath in 7734? So breath is a very strong element throughout my work and with my work with the dancers. So firstly, I see breath as the source of life. And in 7734, it is very much represent that. The piece is set as, you know, in a concentration camp where Jews were murdered in guard chambers, gasping for air. The need to breathe, to stay alive, perhaps, um, was very, it was very, was very uh, prominent that in that kind of connotation. And maybe now as well, when we have the COVID-19 pandemic, we realize in how important is, is the, you know, the, the breath. And, um, but beside that, breath is also used in my work to engage in various to, um, energies and bring performers to perform in various state of minds. So for example, you breathe differently when you are scared, when, when you're performing that you are scared or when you're behaving as scared or when you are the opposite, when you are completely relaxed. You breathe differently or different energy when you are um, angry or when you are amused or when you cry and when you laugh. All of them have different kind of breath and are very much interested in that energy of breathing. Uh, each one has a different quality of breath um, and throughout the training, in fact, we from every day we work with breath uh, through the through the warm up, and then when we create, when we working on ensemble work on unison, a lot of the time uh, we work on unifying breath and acknowledging each other breath and responding to each other breath. So it's part of the one of the um, work the tools that I'm using quite a lot in my choreography. So it might answer some other questions about those practice that I use. Um, in relating, again, back to 7734, I might say that also um, I saw breath as one person identity. So there is the other scene with the plastic bag that is kind of the person who who moved the plastic with his own breath, his own breath created other movements. So we, we spoke about that and I think breath has something that is very important physically because it goes into our body and then it exits the word from our body. We inhale, we inhale and we take in and when we excel we give it back to the world, um, which is something that I find very fascinating physically wise. <laughs> 